Broadcasting from the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios in the home of the Zach Gelb Show. This is Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. WNJE Trenton, Philadelphia. Ready? It's time to talk sports. National. National. Local. Local. Professional. Completely unprofessional. High school and college. Let's take it even further off the hook. It's the Zach Gelb Show. We are rolling. On On Fox Fox Sports Sports 920, 920, The Jersey. Jersey. Day number five here on Radio Row. It's the Zach Gelb Show right here on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. The birds are in the big game, baby, as we get ready for Sunday up against the New England Patriots. And now joining us. From my knowledge, as an Eagles fan, and that's the great Dr. Oz. Doc, fly, how are you? Hi, Eagles, fly. How about that? That's right. You want to sing the rest of the song? It's on the road to victory. <laughs> that's right. They've all heard it. They just want to see it now on Sunday. So we had a great exchange, actually, this morning. Nick Mangold, of the, uh, formerly of the Jets, was here, and he's cooking up all these wings, and he's bringing all the guests' wings. And the next thing I know, someone goes, really? At 8.45 in the morning, wings, I look up, and it's you. So I guess you don't approve of my diet. No, actually, so I know Nick, and uh, I, I, I did a little impromptu judging of Nick's rib uh, wings versus some of his uh, compatriots. So uh, he's a, he has a fantastic taste for the stuff. He's really good at it. However, at 8.45 in the morning, I did get caught a little off guard with the sauce on the wings in your mouth. <laughs> and the blue cheese. <laughs> and the blue cheese. <laughs> well, welcome to radio. When I, when I was an intern in this business, they would bring Del Frisco's, great steakhouse in Philadelphia, yes. obviously, yep. and they would bring filet mignon, lobster oh. mac and cheese, oh. asparagus, and I would look up and I would go, it's 6.30 in the morning, but when you get free filet mignon, you eat it. Exactly right. I, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> We're talking to Dr. Oz here on Radio Row. So what are you feeling before the big game, being an Eagles fan? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I, I have a commercial in the game this year. Oh, really? Yeah, I made a commercial with Turkish Airlines. Uh, Morgan Freeman had done it last year. He was a guest on my show, and he had a fantastic time because he said, listen, it's all about lifting people up. So I thought, okay, we'll make this commercial about the five senses. Right? How you see the world, how you hear the world, what you taste around you, and what you're sensing to your question. And so if you look at your five senses, a lot of times your most powerful sense, like your eyes, you'll see millions of hues, but you got to look up to see them. So I think if the Eagles get out there, first series is going to be rough like it was against the Vikings. I think there's going to be you know, tight. I mean, the Patriots have been here so many years that it won't matter to them. And all we got to do is get one small little symbolic event happen in our favor. And that's about when the Super Bowl commercial should run, by the way. It's supposed to run the first quarter. Like we with the interception against the Vikings. One small little thing that reminds everybody we can make this happen. Because I think we'll do it. And I also think one difference in past games with the Patriots have played is we're, we're such risk takers, which I love about the Eagles, that I don't, I don't think they'll give the ball back at the end. You know what's fascinating with Doug? You look at Doug and you look at the mental side of, of sports. And now with Twitter – you get to see what everything says. Now, Doug's not on Twitter, but you still get to hear and see everything in the newspapers, the radio yeah. shows, and, and all that. And before this season, Doug was written off. One year, can't do it, doesn't have the qualifications, not going to be good. And this year, everything didn't go right for them. People will say, oh, it's a Super Bowl. Everything went right for them. They got here. No. They lost Carson Wentz, Jason Peters, Jordan Hicks, Chris Maragos, and they're still here. And I think it's because of the leadership of Doug Peterson. I really do believe that. I agree 100%. First of all, some of the, the calls that he makes. The, that, that, He's the, got cojones. I mean, the, the, <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> the two long touchdown throws. Who does that? You're up. Where, where they, but he knew they would, that the Vikings have a great team. They could come back. Right? Two touchdowns isn't enough. I mean, that's what the Jaguars, I think. And the Jaguars, you know, they, they had some New York Giants DNA, you know, in there. They got soft, though. They did. Because right before, if you look at the NFC and AFC championship game, birds are up. 30 seconds left, two timeouts, they get a field goal. Yeah. Jaguars. You take a knee. They take a knee. How do you explain that? Well, look at last year's Super Bowl. The Falcons literally could have taken a knee and won. <laughs> and they, they decided they, to throw the football. Exactly. You get sacked 10 yards back, can't, can't get a field goal. I mean, at that point, you just want to do almost anything. Throw, you know, take the risk when you control the ball because you know what's going to happen when Brady gets it back, which is a tribute to him. By the way, so Brady and I both have books out. Uh, and they're on the New York Times bestseller list. So he's been te- trash texting me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wait, you and Tom Brady, you so he'll, exchange texts so he'll say, trash talk? Well, I, I said, you know, you're in my lane. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a health book. He wrote TB12. <laughs> he said, it's my lane now. But look at the guy. I mean, age 40, his real age, which is the way you assess how old your body thinks you are. he doesn't look 40. No. He's got the real age of someone in his early 30s. So when he says, I'm playing five more years, why not? So you, you, you appreciate that. I, and I was watching Carson. I went to the game. A couple weeks ago, I saw Carson Wentz limping on the sideline. And, uh, you know, it's an amazing thing about 
Carson Wentz is a strong bull of a man. I just want to make sure he stays that way. And that's the big issue as an Eagles fan. I mean, this is a huge game Sunday. I'm, but we have such good infrastructure now. I actually like to coach a lot. I, you know, not every time are we going to get the first down on fourth down. And people are going to be tweeting. He's a fool. How would you do it? Do it. But at this point, he has done enough right that he earns the benefit of the doubt. That you know he's going to be aggressive. It's something you have to live with, and it got them to the Super Bowl. So who am I to second guess it now? So you know, I, I was never good enough to play in the pros, but I played football in college. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Uh, and where at? At Harvard. Oh, okay. I mean, I played. I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. And so you I, also went to Penn too, right? I went to Penn. Yeah, I went to Penn for medical school and business school. But uh, but I went to undergrad up in Boston. And in fact, I would go to Patriots games. They were terrible back then. But I'd go to the games because sure. you know, I enjoy it. But uh, I, we, our coach would always say, if we're not good enough to, to get half a yard, no matter what down it is, we don't deserve to win a game anyway. I know in the pros it's different because they can stunt do all kinds of other things. But most pro teams should be able to convert most of their fourth down plays if it's a yard or less. And I think we're going to get to that. I think that most teams went for it once a game on average, right, this year? That was the average in the league. And our studios were actually, we broadcast from the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios. So, Princeton, Harvard, any good memories? Oh, kind. Well, actually, Lou Leone, who, uh, who's the general manager of the Fox station that we're on, Fox 5 in New York, uh, we played against him. He was a slot back uh, oh, really? for, for Princeton, and we went ahead. And uh, Bobby Holly, who's one of my best friends, was a quarterback against us, which is unfortunate because he was all Ivy and won two Super Bowl rings. So, uh, he played for Miami and the Redskins. So. It's pretty neat, though, the Ivy League, because people look at the Ivy League, it's a bunch of smart athletes, they're going to go on to be doctors, businessmen, but they've actually produced a lot of solid football players. Well, the irony about the Ivy League... Jason Garrett. Yes, they're like you, on and on. There's, they're, they're, you know, Fitzgerald, uh, Fitzpatrick, rather, from the Jets last year, was you know, sure. played for Harvard as well. You know, you, you don't have to pay to go to school in the Ivies if you don't have money. If you have money, they charge you full freight, it's expensive, but it's cheaper to come to Harvard if you don't have money than going to a state school. So great athletes can get a great education and doesn't cost them anything. So it's allowed the Ivy sports teams to really improve. That's why uh, Harvard and Yale and Princeton and, and you know Columbia have teams that go play the NCAA basketball tournaments. That you know when you win when you win even one game in that tournament, you got to have a good team, right? You're top 25 in the country automatically by definition. So you know the, and football teams have gotten a lot better. Harvard was in the top 20 last year. So you know, I think um, it's it's a higher level of sports than I when I was there. But I, you know, I, the big difference is we don't have depth. In the Ivy Leagues, you don't have 30 really, really top players. you got five really great players. Any one of which could go to the pros. But when you get past them, it's, it's mere mortals like me. If you want to be at this level and play at this level for this long like Tom has done it, you need to take care of your body. That's an obvious and clear statement. The way, though, with Alex Guerrero, his trainer, and the diet and the TB12 method, what do you make of all that? I'm a big fan of it. Actually, he came on last year's little video to talk a little bit about how he values food. But it, it is apparently, it, it is more apparent every day as we understand the deeper science of what makes the body age and prevent some of that trauma, that if you use the right tools, you can dramatically change the life expectancy of a player. So Tom Brady doesn't just eat really, really well. He hydrates. It's obvious. He stretches in ways most of us don't. It's not comfortable stretching. Uh, I watched the documentary, and oh, saw, yeah. those are aggressive massages. Yeah, these are, you know. Like, you, I go get a massage and, you, you know, fall asleep. nice, comfy, fall asleep. They're going really at the muscles. Yeah, they, they want to, you have to open up tissues that are being taught and pulled together. So, we're, and this is also going to impact on how we deal with joints. A lot of our treatment of joints is replace it. But then you realize that the joint is only having pain because the muscles around it are pulling harder than they should because the joints next to them are tight. So, now all of a sudden, you got to get one joint away. You're going to really open your knee up. I still hobble once in a while because, you know, if I play too much sports. So, so it's, I have a right knee uh, issue. So I'll have to o open up my right hip and my right ankle wow. to open up my right knee. Interesting. And so it's a formula. I, yes, it's a formula. But, the, but you, when you study your body, you begin to learn it. And one of the beauties of pro sports is people get paid enough to pay attention. When Tom Brady figures things out, copy them. Because <laughs> people are spending a lot of money to make sure that he's getting it right. Wrapping up with Dr. Oz right now on radio. I have to ask you a big guy question. Please. You knowing philadelphia area very well going to penn and, and growing up in the area what's your favorite cheesesteak i know that may be a little irony to you i like i like pat's cheesesteak okay and i took uh, my wife there on our first date after she several wow. times told me she was a vegetarian <laughs> and i thought back then a vegetarian is people who ate vegetables <laughs> <laughs> that's great so you're rooting for the eagles obviously in the yeah. game and, and you believe they're going to do it i really do and I think it comes down to the first couple minutes of the game, just making sure they get their heads in the right. There's no way the Patriots won't score early. 
and uh, it's okay because we proved it with Minnesota that that's not a problem. Well, Doc, well, Doc, I'm glad we could get on the same page today, even though we had a little rough start with the wings at 8:45 in the morning. <laughs> uh, one more thing, actually, though, because this is a, a good question for the audience. We always get this time of the year: How do you lose weight? How do you lose weight? How do you lose weight? What's your best response if someone wants to knock off about 15 pounds? Number one thing is cut back on white foods: white rice, white uh, pasta, white sugar. It's still carbs. And it's, don't go to zero because you won't be able to be completely unbearable if you try. But if you just avoid all the places white foods sneak into your diet, including soft drinks, uh, and it, uh, automatically, two days of detox, and you won't feel good. After that, it's seamless. And it works for everybody, pretty much. Are you going to the game? Oh, of course. Where are I your got seats? Forget, I have, uh, I'll show them to you. I've got really good seats because... Got to be careful here. Yes. People I, will start chasing after you. I have, uh, I brought my whole family out. I've got oh, wow. kids. Uh, you know, I, they're flying from all over the country. They wouldn't miss this. I've got in-laws. I just love how you have them in, in the bag. I, could, I, I, I could, guess that's the safest place to keep them, right? But they're on the 50-yard line. Oh, my God. <laughs> they're, they're, that's not really... this is, the face value on these are $3,500. This is a great seat. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got to come to the game. I've got to go to the game. Right? Okay, here's three. I'll take one. Uh, no problem. See you later. The game. Bring the, you bring the wings, though. <laughs> you got it. Dr. Oz, great to see you. Thank you so much. It's the Zach Yelp Show, Fox Sports 920 The Jersey. Back after this.